Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at two ways that we can find the, um, the coordinate, the Y bar coordinate of, a, of the center of mass of a thin wire. So the Y bar coordinate, so somewhere in here, kind of of this um, shape. Of course, X bar is gonna be right in the middle, but I and suppose this is a semicircle. And suppose the radius is one. And I wanna figure out that Y bar. Okay, so radius one circle. So we can kind of think something like this. Y is equal to one minus a square root of one minus X squared. And we want to determine the Y bar coordinate of the centroid here, Y or thin. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, we can do this as a limiting process of um, finding the, um, the center of mass of an archway as this arch gets thinner and thinner. And the limit of that is actually going to be it. That's one way to do it. That's not too bad. Um, the other way of doing it is to um, actually work through the rigmarole of what's going on. Let's remind ourselves what's happening though with that rigmarole. Um, let's, so let's, um, let's think. Um, so to compute Y bar, we're finding the average value of a function with respect to kind of like the ma um, a mass variable that kind of goes along and accumulates and goes around here. Now, that is going to be measured by an arc length. So the derivative of arc length will kind of help us with our um, dm portion of this integral. Um, if you think about um, how mass is changing. So the dm portion of this integral is going to be, we take the derivative of arc length, which um, is like, if this is our function, is something like this. Um, uh, it takes it can take on a form like this. This is one way of looking at it. And finding arc length, if we just have a function f of x is equal to something with x. So this would be like an arc length derivative. Um, and uh, there's multiple ways of, of seeing this, but in general, <clears throat> if you think about a uh, triangle with a, a dx and a dy, and you're looking at the radius here. Well, if you look at a similar triangle, it has a dy, dx, and a one, and if you compute, and this would be the length of this. Um, um, this would make sense because um, if we take this then and multiply it by dx, it's like multiplying this triangle by dx and you end up getting this one so that this product actually ends up being the arc length right there, or kind of the length of a triangle right there. And so like a little piece of arc length. This is another way of thinking about it. Anyhow, let's take a look at this because this, act this is actually our dm value that we want right in here. Now, if we um, look at this, and let's think about this, we have one plus, now the derivative of this using the chain rule, we have a minus two X because it's driven the inside um, all over two. And that's just like a half times something then raised to the negative a half power. It's like putting a square root in here. And notice these things cancel and then we're squaring this. And so we end up getting one plus X squared all over one minus X squared. Now, if we multiply one by one minus X squared over one minus X squared and add fractions, we're gonna have a one minus X squared plus an X squared cancel out and we'll end up getting one over one minus X squared. You can check that, um, or we can just kind of write that out quick. Let's see here. Then we end up getting one minus X squared over one minus X squared. See when these add, um, you're gonna get those canceling, so you get that. Okay, so this is going to be the portion under the square root here. Um, so we have square root of one over one minus X squared um, DX. Now, what about our, now what are we taking the average value of? Well, the Y average function is uh, what we wanna take the, <coughs> the integral of. Now the Y average function that we 
have, okay, in this particular, so actually we're right here, right on the line. So our y average is actually going to be just this itself because kind of that's the part, I mean, like this is right in the middle, right, of the wire. So it's just going to be that, 1 minus x squared. So if we multiply this through, we just end up getting 1, right? And then we're integrating, of course, from negative uh, 1 to 1. And the total arc length as we go along this is actually going to be, um, it's 1 half of way around a circle of radius 1. 2 pi r is the full circumference. So 2 pi times 1 is full circumference, so just pi. So it's so pi, so we're going to have 1 over pi because that's like the total length of the mass integral if we had a mass variable, but we're doing all of this in terms of x. So that cancels with that from negative one to one. That's just, um, um, so that's just for integrating a constant one over interval of length two. It's like a rectangle height one over two. That's like two, two times one over pi. That's two over pi. So it looks like for a wire thin piece, we're actually looking at um, two over pi. So like, you know, roughly around two thirds or something like that. And that's going to be the y bar coordinate, okay? Is it going to be equal to uh, 2 over pi? Now, let's take a look at, um, at another way of doing this uh, using a limiting process. Suppose that we have an archway, okay, like this. And suppose that this radius right here, this is just, we'll just label it as r, and we're going to take a limit as r goes to 1 <clears throat> and see what happens. So um, we know that if, now in here, I'm just going to give, uh, give this to you, however this can be calculated, that the, um, for a circle of, ra um, of radius 1, that the, um, that the centroid, the y bar of the centroid is just four over three pi. Now for, for this smaller one, it's actually going to be four over three pi times r. It's just going to um, just, that's the constant multiple. We multiply 10 times the radius to get the centroid value um, if these are areas. Okay, so based upon that, we can think about average um, um, <clears throat> uh, weighting, a weighted averaging. So if we think about the ratio of this semicircle to the like to the to the whole area is the same as the ratio of the the whole little circle to the whole big circle and in that ratio there's going to be some pies but they'll cancel out so really what we need is just the ratio of smaller radius squared to bigger radius squared the bigger radius is one smaller radius is r squared so the ratio uh, is just simply um of, of the smaller part is r squared to 1, which is just r squared. So we can think in our average weighting, we have 4r over 3 pi times r squared. That's the smaller ratio. So it's r squared to 1. Um, and since the, uh, <clears throat> the, the weightings, the weight, so that's actually the weighted fraction is r squared over 1. Now, since the, the has to add up to one, we, we simply get that the other weight is actually one minus r squared, kind of nice. Um, and we, and uh, for this portion right here, so we kind of, what we're doing is we're having this piece in here and we have this outer, this piece right in here. So we have those two pieces are gonna add together to give you um, with the proper weighting. And so let's suppose that what we're after is um, the centroid, the y bar centroid value of this, this, this piece right in here. So that's what this weighting is going to refer to because we know the weights have to add to one. There's two of them. So the weight in here, let's just call A. That's what we're going to be searching for. And if we, if we do a weighted average being between these, we should get the, the cent y bar centroid uh, value of the whole thing. So um, then if we, we could solve for A, First, let's take this and subtract it over. And when we do that, we can pull out a four over three pi on that side. So we get four over three pi, one minus, and then we have, notice an r cubed here, is equal to a times one minus r squared. 
So then we can solve for a, we get a is equal to four over three pi, one minus r cubed, all over one minus r squared. And we're taking a limit as our approach is one. <clears throat> now we can do this in various ways. We can either do this by L'Hopital's rule or by factoring. We can do it, well, let's illustrate both ways. So if we do it by factoring, this is one minus r times one plus r plus r squared, all over one minus r times one plus r, and notice that those factors cancel, so now we can plug in an r value. And when we do, uh, we get a three, oh, we, so we plug in r is equal to one because we're taking a limit. We get three over two, so three halves. So we get three halves times four over three pi, and notice what happens is cancel, and we're left with two over pi, just as we had computed before. Now, if we use L'Hopital's rule here, we just take a derivative of the top and bottom. So the derivative of the top is simply minus three r squared, and the derivative of the bottom is um, minus two r. We can do that because the top and bottom are both going to zero. And four over three pi, and then notice that um, when you plug in r is one, um, this just comes out to three halves times four over three pi, which again is two over pi. So we have uh, two basic ways of computing this, at least in this particular case, we use a limiting um, uh, possibility where we're, we're just scrunching this, making R get closer and closer up to one here. So it becomes a thin wire. But in any case, we just now computed the Y bar to be two over pi. Now let's, um, and now, um, yeah, so we have Y bar of that wire is, uh, is two over pi. Thanks for watching.